hello guys welcome to my 10 so in this video we are going to look at the anatomy of umbilicus well umbilicus is just a puckered scar but it is of very high cosmetic value we'll go deep into the anatomy of it what is the umbilicus umbilicus is the most obvious feature of the abdomen most obvious feature of the abdomen it is in fact a normal puckered scar in the anterior abdominal wall where it will represent the site of attachment of the umbilical cord it's just a puckered scar but it is the attachment of the umbilical cord in the womb attachment of the umbilical cord in the womb now we are going in going to look at the position position of the umbilicus So what is the position of the umbilicus? The position will vary according to the age. The in adults, in adults, umbilicus lies at the level of L3 and L4 vertebra. And in newborns, it is at slightly at the lower level of pelvic region lower level of pelvic region in old age it comes down comes down up to the level of abdominal muscles well it is the most obvious feature in the entire abdominal wall and it is a puckered scar which has the attachment of the umbilical cord in the womb. Position, it will vary in adults, it is at the level of L3 and L4 vertebrae. In newborns, it is slightly at the lower level in pelvic region. And in old age also, it will come down due to the weak tone of the abdomen muscles. Now we are going to look at the anatomical significance of the umbilicus. Coming to anatomical significance. umbilicus lies at the level of at the level of t10 right so it indicates indicates the level of t10 dermatome so it is supplied by the 10th spinal segment it is one of the most important site of Portocaval anastomosis. Important site of portocaval anastomosis. And the level of umbilicus serves as a watershed line of, of the venous and the lymphatic drainage. Where above the level of the umbilicus, they drain in, they drain above, and below the level of umbilicus, they drain below. So at the level of umbilicus, at the level of umbilicus, venous and lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic drainage. Flow upward above the umbilicus and below the umbilicus flow below so we have seen that the venous drainage will drain into the axillary vein above the level of umbilicus and will drain into the great saphenous vein below the level of umbilicus and the lymphatic drainage they drain into the axillary lymph nodes above the level of umbilicus and to the deep inguinal lymph nodes in the below the level of umbilicus so this is the anatomical significance of the umbilicus now we are going to look at the embryological significance of the umbilicus coming to the embryological significance first one is the Umbilicus is the meeting point of four folds of embryonic plate. 
it is the meeting point of four folds of embryonic plate two lateral folds a head fold and a tail fold the second thing is the in embryonic life a defect exists in the linea alba at this side called as the umbilical ring which provides passage to the following structures it is having a defect in the linea alba called as the umbilical ring umbilical ring and it provides passage to the one number one provides passage to the number one midgut loop midgut loop so what happens is the midgut loop herniates into the umbilical cord during the 5th to 10th weeks of the intrauterine life and returns back to the abdominal cavity during the 10th and 12th week of intrauterine life Your midgut loop will go inside and come back to the abdominal cavity the second thing is the the two endodermal tubes the two endodermal tubes called as the allantois and the vitello intestinal duct vitello intestinal duct so what happens the two endodermal tubes which are the allantois and the vitello intestinal duct will project into the umbilical cord the allantois is diverticulum of endodermal cloaca and its proximal part will give rise to the urinary bladder and the distal part to the urethras so the vitello intestinal duct is a diverticulum of midgut which will extend from the distal part of the ileum to the umbilicus so sometimes this proximal part will persist vitello intestinal duct and it may persist as the meckel's diverticulum the last thing is the umbilical vessels the umbilical vessels which are the two arteries and one vein which pass to and from from the umbilical cord in the placenta so the remnants of umbilical arteries are present in adult as a medial umbilical ligament and remnant of umbilical vein as a uh, uh, ligamentum teres we will look at it so this is the urinary bladder this is the apex of the urinary bladder and this is the umbilicus so from the apex of the urinary bladder the median umbilical ligament which is the remnant of urethras we will attach from the apex of the urinary bladder to the umbilicus and then we have ligamentum teres which is the remnant of umbilical vein will will be attached to the umbilicus and then we have two medial umbilical ligaments like this two medial umbilical ligaments which are the remnant of umbilical artery i'm going to name it down this was the ligamentum teres ligamentum teres which is the remnant of umbilical vein this is the median ligamentum median umbilical ligament and these two are the medial umbilical ligament it is the median these two are the medial umbilical ligament these two are the medial umbilical ligament that's the ligamentum teres and the median umbilical ligament so ligamentum teres is a remnant of left umbilical vein these two medial umbilical ligaments are the remnant of umbilical artery and the median umbilical ligament is the remnant of urethras which attaches to the apex of the urinary bladder and the umbilicus so thus there are four important embryological remnants ligamentum teres two umbilical median ligaments and the median umbilical ligament now we are going to look at the clinical aspects of the umbilicus let coming to the clinical aspects of the umbilicus the first thing that we are going to discuss is the congenital anomalies so what are the congenital anomalies we have first one is the fecal fistula fecal fistula And the second thing we have is the urinary fistula what is the congenital anomaly it's a the important congenital anomalies of the umbilicus are fistula and exomphalus we are going to discuss about fecal and urinary fistula failure of vitello intestinal duct vitello intestinal duct 
failure of fetal intestinal duct to obliterate results in the fecal fistula at the umbilicus and then we have urinary fistula this is the failure of urecus to obliterate leads to the urinary fistula at the umbilicus the second thing we are discuss is the exomphalus exomphalus or it's also called as omphalocele omphalocele so what happens is in this case the failure of mid gut loop to return to the abdominal cavity the mid gut loop mid gut loop failure to return back to the abdominal cavity results in the exomphalus because since the intestine protrudes through the defect in all the layers of the abdominal wall a thin ring which will cover the transparent membrane it is called as the amnion covers this so exomphalus is when the mid gut loop failures to return to the abdominal cavity and it will be there in the uh, umbilicus so it is known as the uh, exomphalus the third thing we are going to discuss is the congenital umbilical hernia congenital umbilical hernia in this condition the intestine protrudes to the umbilicus due to weakness of the umbilical umbilical scar hence it is covered by the skin so what happens is the intestine protrudes to the protrudes through the umbilicus due to weakening of the skin so these are the uh, clinical aspects of the umbilicus the umbilicus is also called as the hot bed of embryology by the clinical clinicians so this is about the anatomy of the umbilicus please if you like the video make sure to subscribe and comment and you must definitely watch our other anatomy videos thank you thank you so much